Hello students. In this video, I'm going to take you through an example on how to linearize a nonlinear system of ODEs. Uh, I'm going to do it with the assistance of Sage Math. Okay. So um, first thing we'll do is, you know, we define our variables. Um, I'm going to use u, v, y, and t. And then um, I'm going to take uh, this nonlinear system of ODEs. So if you watched my um, videos on the theory behind linearizing nonlinear systems for ODEs, you might recognize this. This is x prime equals, and then I call this upper equation here, I call this equation g1, and the bottom equation here I would call g2. Now if you distribute the x in this top equation, you'll see you get an x minus 1 fourth x squared minus xy. The x squared and the xy terms give you the nonlinear terms. In the bottom equation, if you distribute the y, you'll see you get a minus xy and a minus 1 fifth y squared, and the xy and the y squared give you the nonlinear terms. That's what makes this a nonlinear system of ODEs. What we're going to do to this nonlinear system is we're going to linearize by um, computing the Jacobian matrix for this nonlinear system, and then we're going to evaluate it at, a, at an equilibrium point. The equilibrium point I'm going to choose is the non-zero equilibrium. So <clears throat> if you look at this system of, equ of equations, you can say, well, clearly x equals zero and y equals zero is an equilibrium. That's not the equilibrium I'm going to choose. Um, likewise, I can choose x equals zero, and I can choose what makes this line down here equal to zero. That's not the one I'm going to choose either, and likewise, I'm not going to choose a y is zero and this top equation is equal to zero. No, instead, I'm going to choose where this top equation in the parentheses and the bottom equation inside the parentheses are simultaneously equal to zero. That's the equilibrium that I'm going to linearize about. But first, let's just take a quick look at what this nonlinear system of ODEs looks like. So we'll plot the um, vector field for this nonlinear system. And you can see you got um, the arrows are going down towards um, this green point here. If they emanate from the origin, they go to this green point. Then um, in this region here, <clears throat> they seem to be heading towards uh, this point here around 5. And likewise, they seem to be curving down and kind of going towards the axis here and then towards this uh, number 4 here. Um, so um, those regions seem to be, um, the de de demarcation lines seem to be this red line and this blue line here. Um, for the rest of the video, I'm going to associate the y variable with this blue line and the x variable with this red line. And I'll tell you what this red line and blue line um, actually mean. These are called the null clines for this system. And um, this red line here, this is where this top 1 minus 1 fourth x minus y is equal to 0. So if you set that equal to 0, you're going to get the equation of a line. So I set that equal to 0, and then if I push the y over to the other side, I get y equals 1 minus 1 fourth x. That is certainly the equation of a line, and that's what this blue line is. I'm sorry, what this red line is. I apologize what the red line is. Likewise, the blue line is where this bottom equation, 1 minus x minus 1 fifth y is equal to 0. And so if I set that equal to 0, <clears throat> certainly I get a line. And let's see, if I multiply everything by 5, then um, I get a 5 minus 5x equal, minus y equals 0. And then if I move the y over to the other side, I get y equals 5 minus 5x, and I get this blue line up here. That's the null line. So what is the null line? Let's look at the, let's stay on this blue line here. That's where this line, uh, this equation is equal to zero. I'll scroll back up again. If this equation is equal to zero, then y prime is equal to zero. So this is where we have constant y. So y isn't changing along this blue line. Likewise, x is not changing along this red line here because that's where x prime is equal to 0 because this line here, y minus 1 fourth x minus y is equal to 0. So that's called the null line. All right, now 
um, let's find where the null clines intersect. And remember, where the null clines intersect, that is going to be my non-zero equilibrium. That's where those equations are equal to zero simultaneously. Now, um, if those are equal to zero simultaneously, I'm just going to move these expressions here, the minus one-fourth x minus y over to the right-hand side, and the minus x minus one-fifth y over to the right-hand side. And if I do that, I get this system of equations that I can easily solve. Uh, using SAGE. So I'll set up my uh, matrix, uh, my coefficient matrix of 1 fourth 1 and 1 and 1 fifth. And I will set up my right hand side to be 1 1 and then I'll just do the backslash operator and I'll get my equilibrium solution which I'll call EQ. So we'll have to remember that that the 16th, 16 nineteenths and 15 nineteenths is my EQ non-zero equilibrium solution in the xy coordinate system. Now, this is where I'm going to linearize. I'm going to linearize about this point here. To do that, I'm going to take the Jacobian now of the um, nonlinear system of equations. And if you remember, this was the top equation. There it is, the x times you know, 1 minus 1 fourth x minus y. Here's the bottom equation. And so this was the G1, uh, this equation was the G2. So um, I'm going to call this vector here, I'm going to call that capital G. I'm going to take the Jacobian with respect to X and Y. And these are the partial derivatives. So here's the partials for um, the partial of X, uh, this um, G1 with respect to X. And then the partial of this expression, this G1 with respect to Y, and I get this part of the matrix here. Likewise, if I want this bottom row, I take the partial of this expression with respect to X, and then I take the partial of this expression with respect to Y, and I get these bottom two components of the matrix here and here. So this is my Jacobian matrix. I'm going to evaluate it at the equilibrium solution 16 19 and 15 19 And when I do so, I get this Jacobian matrix, which is a matrix of constants. And now this matrix is my matrix for my linear system of ODEs. So let's take a look at the vector field for this system, linear system of ODEs. And if you look, we get classic saddle point behavior seems to be flowing from this quadrant down to the equi um, equilibrium solution, which in the UV coordinate system is now 0, 0. So that 16, 19, 15, 19 has been shifted to 0, 0 in the UV coordinate system. This quadrant's going upward um, to the um, 0 e to the equilibrium solution, then it's flowing away in either of the quad uh, uh, quadrants. So I expect, just by looking at this, that this equilibrium is going to be a saddle point and we can um, verify that by using the eigenvalue method. If I take the eigenvalue, if I find the eigenvalues of that matrix, sure enough, I get one positive and one negative. So that's clearly a saddle point. The corresponding eigenvectors for my linearized system are one minus one and one fifteen sixteenths. And so if I solve this system, um, I just take here are my eigenvectors and here are my eigenvalues in the exponential. And so I'm going to have some exponential growth and some exponential decay. I'm um, going to get some split behavior. And so um, I just reiterate that point that this equilibrium solution is, um, is an unstable saddle point. And so um, what I want to do in the next part of the video, um, if you wanted to you know, pause here, you can certainly um, digest uh, that material, that's how we linearize the ODE, uh, nonlinear system of ODEs.